Freemasonry and the Labor Movement in America. The first Monday in September marks the end of summer, and all across the USA, Americans celebrate Labor Day with picnics, parades, and backyard barbecues. On this episode of the Old Fashioned Masonic Podcast, we will dive into Freemasonry and the Labor Movement in America. While the first recorded mention of Labor Day was in September of 1882, at a celebration in New York City, it was President Grover Cleveland who signed a decree in 1894, marking the first weekend in September as a national recognition of an official Labor Day as a national holiday. More than 60 years before President Cleveland signed his new law, a devout Baptist family was celebrating the birth of their baby boy in Cape May, New Jersey. Stevens was born in Cape May, New Jersey on August 3, 1821. His parents were devout Baptists, and Stevens was educated for the ministry in the hopes that he would become a member of the clergy. The Stevens family sustained financial reverses during the Panic of 1837. Stevens then ended his formal education with the intent of learning a trade. He was trained as a tailor and worked to help support his family. Stevens also became a master mason of Kensington Lodge No. 211 in Philadelphia on March 24, 1865. Prior to the end of the Civil War, the establishment of trade unions had not found much success. While Stevens had helped to organize the Garment Workers Union in 1862, it was not until after his personal experiences as a member of Freemasonry that he was inspired to found a new fraternal organization for tradesmen, which he called the Knights of Labor. Speaking to fellow union-minded garment workers in a meeting at his home on Thanksgiving Day in 1869, Stevens presented his concept for a new organization which he proclaimed as the Noble and Holy Order of Knights of Labor. This new brotherhood would bring together not only fellow tailors, but would open membership in Stevens' own words to every laborer, mechanic, and artisan who desired professional improvement, regardless of country, creed, or color. Certainly Uriah Stevens' mission was an American-inspired concept of unification that might have found favor with our nation's founding fathers. Uriah Stevens' vision for the Knights of Labor was certainly inspired by the ritual and lessons he himself had learned as a mason in his Philadelphia Lodge. Stevens' plan for the Knights of Labor included his being installed as the first master workman as well as naming himself as the District Master Workman and the first Grand Master Workman of the new Knights of Labor. In creating and founding the Knights of Labor, Stevens freely adapted many of the symbols of Freemasonry and also some of the Masonic ritual into his new organization. The building in which members would assemble was called a lodge. Members referred to each other as brothers. Stevens dreamed of a new fraternal network of skilled laborers who would work together as fraternal brothers for the good of their fellow members Members wishing to join would go through a ritual ceremony led by masters, wearing aprons and giving lectures on the nobility of labor. Secret signs and symbols were given to initiates as they were sworn to secrecy and loyalty to the Brotherhood of the Knights of Labor. Within a decade, the Knights of Labor had expanded from one assembly or chapter to 1,300 local assemblies. The organization was quickly growing into a large and powerful labor movement. However, as the organization grew and, perhaps, as Stevens was losing some control over the brotherhood he had conceived and founded, there were polarizing issues causing cracks in the fellowship. Stevens was frustrated with the growing disenchantment rising from some members of the Knights of Labor who wanted to abolish the secret ritual which Stevens had created. Stevens also was fearful that the new membership was also becoming too aggressive in calling for frequent strikes and union demands. Seeking to re-establish himself as a labor leader, Uriah Stevens launched a political campaign and stood for election to the U.S. House of Representatives in 1878. As a defeated candidate for the Greenback Labor Party, Stephen Starr as a labor leader was now tarnished. A year later, he resigned from the Knights of Labor. Under new leadership, the Knights of Labor grew in power and influence in America, as well as worldwide. Membership was open to what was described as all members of the producing class. Factory workers, small business owners, and farmers. Those not entitled to membership included lawyers, speculators, or anyone involved in sinful business enterprises, including the liquor industry and gambling. The Knights of Labor membership dwindled in the early 20th century. So what became of the first Grand Master Workman? Uriah Stevens' reputation with many in the Knights of Labor was still held in high esteem, but Stevens, at age of 61, was working to create a new fraternal labor-centric organization. It was at his home in Philadelphia on February 13, 1882, that Uriah Stevens passed away and went to meet his maker as he described as the grand architect of the universe. What did you think of this Masonic education piece? Did you know a Freemason founded Labor Day? For more episodes like this, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the Old Fashioned Masonic Podcast.
This research was provided by gracedmay.org in an article written on September 7, 2020.